The last question, uh, which is a good one, uh, again, these have been wonderful questions. I've, I've enjoyed them. Um, really is in the, in the economics, and so I'll, I'll kind of touch on this. This is you're probably better at economics than I am. You've, you've had it long in the game. But it says, what is the relationship between inflation and interest rates with the stock market? Which is a great question, and really that's with the stock market and the economy. And sometimes um, the, 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 the stock market can function uh, a little bit separately from the, the economy. Or, and, and so there's, there's a variety of things and a lot of complexities that go into that. But for the, the, the general answering of that question, um, I would want you to think in the terms that, that really how, how you learn this in economics and basic economics is that there is generally an um, inverse relationship between inflation and interest rates. Now, you say, well, what, what, what does that mean? It means just like stocks and bonds, there's an inverse relationship. Now, that's, this is not always. This is generically. We're in a time now and have been where that has not been the case. But you want to think about from an investing side that they generally, that's how we project and how we look at things, they're generally an inverse relationship, meaning that when is one is up, one is down. And when you're building your portfolio of stocks and bonds, one of the things that we try to do is we put in stocks and bonds because they have an inverse relationship. Uh, stocks are where we really make our money. Um, we get a little bit of an income from bonds, but mo probably more importantly many times, they hedge the portfolio or they keep the portfolio from dropping too much uh, when stocks may, came up, may, may go out of favor. And so it has an inverse relationship. When one's up, one's down. And so as the economy grows and inflation increases, uh, interest rates are usually lower. So that it usually has this opposite effect that when interest rates rise, um, generally uh, you'll, you'll see that, that inflation um, will be down. And the other way around, when inflation goes up, then you'll see that interest rates are low. Now, that's not always the case, and you've seen some <laughs> real differences in that. We've seen them in this generation. But for purposes of you kind of having a basic understanding of how that works, I want you to, to, to kind of think of, of interest rates, uh, what you can borrow money at is what we really think about, what, what, what kind of, right now we can borrow money very cheap, very low interest rates, so 2 or 3%. Um, and inflation right now has been very low, and so we're in, a, in we're in something that's very unique. But as interest rates rise, you'll see that those changes. And so, for understanding the basics of, of of economics and how that works, think of them as having an inverse or opposite relationship. Now, there's obviously a lot of differences in that that uh, that I know you have seen through your years of investing. So I, uh, I would like you to at least talk about maybe some of that because you've seen some through these well, I, major differences. I, I've lived through some of them. You're exactly right. And certainly in the 70s, there was a time when we were going through a highly, in, uh, when inflation was at accelerated rates and just got out of hand, it was seated in the oil embargo when the oil prices went up faster than we could absorb it. So hydrocarbons are so basic to the economy anyway. But that is the reason, as you were saying, right now one of the discussions is will the Federal Reserve raise interest rates? Remember the government, and you know this when I say remember, I'm talking about they borrow money yeah. at a low rate and then they in turn give it the bank's get a higher rate for it, but right now the margins are so slim that the banks have had a hard time lending money at a profit. So when the market comes back, where banks will be able to make money on the margins right now, they, they're too slim. And that's why we see so many banks' branches closing. But uh, it's, an, and then the interest rates, when they want to slow down inflation, they raise the interest rates which means borrowing is more difficult, more expensive, and there's less borrowing, so there's less money in the economy. And by definition, inflation is too many dollars chasing too few goods. And so this is kind of where we are right now with our supply of goods being limited, and yet we know that there's a lot of money and a lot of the criticism is that the government's been flooding more money into the economy and this may be part of exacerbating the the issue so you're right when interest rates going up 
stocks tend to go down. When the stocks are cheap, you can buy them. People buy more of them, and they go up. So I don't know of any really solid investment hedges. Uh, real estate gets affected also, but certainly investing in real estate when it's an inflationary time can be can be difficult because you're chasing the prices up and knowing that they will come down at some point. So again, timing is what we have to be so clearly aware. What, it, what are the economic factors right now? Supply demand underlies all of it, which is, is there more supply or more demand? And that always sets the economy to go forward. And by economics is, is the allocation of scarce resources by simple definition. And so the timing is what are the resources that are available and what are people willing to pay for them? And that's a very good, very good example. Um, it, 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 you've given several in there that I, I think help people understand that if, if you think about that's that's one of the tools that the, the Federal Reserve, different organizations that you hear about, that, that's one of the tools that they have in, in policy, in, in their policies and what they do and easing the economy, tightening the economy. So if you think about when, when interest rates are low, people are borrowing money, they're spending money, the economy tends to grow. And so they, they, they lower those so that people will spend their money and they'll grow. As that happens, it is the natural offset that inflation then begins to rise and it begins to push down. So they're always trying to balance that. Uh, it's never an easy thing. I certainly would not want that job. Um, <laughs> it's very complex. There's a lot of things that go with it. But it's good to understand that generally, if you think of them as having an inverse relationship, uh, it kind of helps you know where things are going. That being said, and as we kind of, uh, you know, bring this to a, to a place of, of, of practical understanding, many times um, people make the mistake of trying to overthink what the economy is going to do or the interest rates are going to do, and they pull out of investments. And more times than not, that's a mistake, especially when you're talking about your retirement accounts that you're just monthly giving to. Uh, the best way to do that is to just set it and forget it. Uh, we're going to go through. These are, these are what we track. We call them cycles. There's peaks. There's troughs. There's a lot of things in between. That's how the market goes. It's going to have ups and downs. It's going to be a part of it. Uh, it'll probably never uh, be just smooth. It's just part of how the push and pull of economics. Uh, the thing that I want you to understand is you don't have to understand that at a deep level uh, to have advantage or to take advantage of investing. You just keep investing. Sometimes a lack of knowledge in that arena helps you to do the right thing, which is just continually invest. Keep investing. Don't stop investing. Keep investing. And then you'll, you'll have everything you need to make sure that you get to your retirement. To insert this, it's also interesting as you become an investor, and you begin to see your investment grow, it really does encourage you yes. and gives you yes. such a much more secure feeling, That's especially true. when it begins to turn up. Uh, the larger amounts turn over, yeah. and it makes a difference. But certainly, we live in it going back into a great economy, yeah. and it has its ups and downs. But just remember, if you're a consistent mm -hmm. investor in the right timing, you will do well in the greatest country that's ever existed. And we want it to stay that way. God bless you. Remember, help me invest. That's the place. That's right. I hope that you will continue to send in your questions. Um, they, they mean a lot to us because uh, we can talk about a lot of things, but what we really want to do is find out what's important to you, uh, the level of understanding, the questions that you have. So hopefully that we can add value to your investment knowledge and that you can increase and grow in that and, uh, and stay curious and read as much as you can, get as much information. But when you have a question, please feel free to just uh, send that in to us. Send those questions in because we really do enjoy them and, and answering them helps us to make sure that we're being relevant and pertinent to you.